I'm very sure that most of you are wondering now about this topic, which has the highest giggle factor in any subject matter. <laughs> about five years ago, I was one of you sitting over there with a curiosity and serious doubt. But after five years later, I can say about this topic with confidence. So I will be talking about this asteroid deflection problem, but my mission goal this morning is to enable you to travel, navigate, explore the space between science fiction and science facts. I mean science fact including engineering and technology solutions. So you will be hearing many different things related to science fiction, science fact, technology, engineering aspects. As all we remember this fantastic movie, <laughs> I think I can just stop right here. <laughs> this is exactly what we are doing. So as all remember, this Hollywood movie was, the one, I think, one of the best international box office hit or success in 1998. But despite is, remember, 168 <laughs> technical flaws identified and observed by, by whom? Engineer and scientist at NASA. I have no doubt that this movie drew much public attention, someone like you, to the serious importance of the impact threat by asteroid or comet, which may cause an extinction of humanity, is a serious problem. However, we cannot ignore the giggle factor. So during my next 50 minute talk, I will be doing my best to get rid of that giggle factor. Such impact threat from asteroid is real. It happened many, many times, and it will happen again sooner or later. Unlike many other natural disasters, such as earthquake, tsunamis, tornado, hurricanes, this impact threat from asteroid can be detected in advance, and also it can be prevented. And this kind of impact is the only natural disaster which can be prevented if we are ready. So Iowa State University was generous enough to create Asteroid Deflection Research Center in 2008. So we are exploring the space technology to be used for this kind of very important missions. So to give you a feeling about the size of asteroid, sorry for using meter, not yard or. <laughs> so I'm using international unit of meter. So on a small, I call small, 100 meter small asteroid, the size of football field like you see here, will cause equivalent impact damage of 1,000 Hiroshima nuclear bomb. I all, whenever I present this material, I apologize talking about nuclear bombs because nobody wants to use that for any situations. So let's go back to the long history. About 74 million years ago, something happened in Iowa. Some of you may not know about that. <laughs> in a small town, Manson, Iowa, a two kilometer asteroid struck the town, but it didn't create crater. The crater was hidden below the surface. That's why nobody knows about this serious extinction class impact happened in our own state. 65 million years ago, much larger. This is a serious extinction class asteroid, 10 kilometer asteroid, struck this Yucatan Peninsula area in Mexico and Nowadays, many of us, many of you, many of the scientists believe that this asteroid impact 
create an extension of dinosaur. But no one witnessed that, as you know. <laughs> but those two major scientific events happened nearly at the same time. Therefore, it is very logical to make a connection to blame asteroid for the extinction of dinosaur. More recently, 50,000 years ago, a 50-meter asteroid or comet struck near Winslow, Arizona, and this is now is the well-known Behringer Crater. Size is about one kilometer, and it, it, this is a sort of size technical information. No one saw the size of the asteroid, so based on crater size, one kilometer, if we divide the size by 20, and that's how we estimate the size of asteroid. So the size is relatively small, 50 meter. That was not the end of the whole story. 13,000 years ago, a four kilometer wide comet might have explored over the North America. Explored and then it created another extinction class event. It wiped out the kind of white, woolly white mammals, and it also uh, eliminated all the kind of animals. The latest extinction class event which happened 13,000 years. Let's scale down to more recent time. In 1908, it's about 104 years ago, a small, again small, 30 to 50 meter asteroid exploded over the Tunguska River area of Siberia in Russia. And that is the photo of the forest wiped out because of the event. But we were all lucky, no one died. But if you sort of estimate the impact damage, it will be the same as 600 Hiroshima nuclear bombs. So nothing happened because no one was killed. But imagine if this impact has maybe one minute of delay, then something might happen in London. So that is a kind of serious situation we have to deal with. Nowadays, we, the scientists, engineers, are able to predict the future location of most asteroid or comet. For example, we have asteroid apophis, which is about 300 meters wide. We know that it will fly or it will miss Earth in 2029 with that short distance, 30,000 kilometers, which is inside of our geostationary satellite, direct broadcast uh, communication satellite. So we can predict future location of impact, possible impact, or position of the asteroid. However, something happened in 2002. A 100-meter asteroid just missed the Earth by that distance. The important thing is that asteroid was discovered after it missed us. <laughs> so we were very lucky. So again, again, I'm talking about a very serious matter. The same asteroid apophis will be coming back to nearby the Earth. So in, but however, we predict that the impact chance is 0.004%, which is nearly zero but it is not exactly zero. So that's the probability. <laughs> so it's not exactly zero, but we know that it will not impact the Earth. So if this asteroid upper phase will hit Earth, Friday, April 13th <laughs> in 2036, the impact damage will be equivalent of 35,000 Hiroshima nuclear bomb. It's a serious, serious, problem. However, we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> this impact will not happen because impact chance is so, so small. But I'm not going to bet on that. <laughs> so as you can see from here, this is sort of typical illustration of our solar system. Our solar system is very crowded. The solar system doesn't just consist of eight planets without Pluto. But there are so many space rock floating around. 
but most of them are not really dangerous. There will not be any collision. However, here is the important issue. The asteroid we should worry about is the asteroid we don't know about. There are so, there are many, many asteroids yet to be discovered, tracked, and characterized. Therefore, we need to find them first before they find us. So a lot of people in our professional community has been emphasizing the following issue. Not location, location, location. <laughs> it's a detection, detection, detection. So only detection is a cru crucial fact in preventing an Armageddon. So NASA has been steadily increasing number of unknown, previously unknown asteroids. As you can see from this chart, in 2012, NASA was able to identify about 9,000 near-Earth objects, which may have a chance to hit Earth. So after taking care of detection issue, next step is to find how to prevent it. So NASA has been developing a plan to develop impact threat mitigation technologies, including a uh, simple concept of evacuation. If we don't have enough time, that's the only solution. However, in practice, you know what we saw, Katrina event. It may not be that simple. And there's another low energy concept, medium energy, high energy, including nuclear bombs. But NASA has been developing a plan to develop those technologies. So when the size of the target asteroid is smaller than 100 meters, maybe evacuation, civil defense, maybe the best solutions. Also, much higher, the largest size of target, unfortunately, we are not ready. We don't have current technology to avoid such extinction class event. So next few slides just briefly shows uh, sort of fundamental concept, including low energy option for asteroid deflections, including so-called gravity tractors, solar sail, or even using laser beams, or even someone proposed to use painting and spray white paints over the surface of the asteroid, and it will change the reflectivity of the asteroid, so at the end, the target will miss the Earth. Second option is to use a satellite. Satellite, more like a missile. So we designed the satellite to hit the target asteroid and provide initial velocity change, and then at the end, those, the target asteroid will miss the Earth. And this concept was demonstrated uh, by NASA's deep impact missions in 2005. So that mission title, Deep Impact, was another movie appeared at the same time, 1998. The movie has more technically sound basis, but it didn't make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so next, uh, let's go back. So high energy nuclear option is necessary when we have very short warning time, one month, one week, even one year. We have no other choice than using these unwanted weapons to protect us. But we may not need Bruce Willis and crews. It will be too expensive to send those crew members to far away in deep space. We need new launch vehicle. So it, may not, it will not be practical. So we are developing unmanned robotic nuclear disruption missions Instead of deflecting, the only option is to fragment and disperse the target asteroids. Whenever we have explosion on the ground, you see that moves around, but it will collapse. But in space, the debris will grow, grow, grow forever. And then the satellite will pass through the debris cloud. That is concept to be shown later. So we have baseline design. 
for reasonable size 300 meter target, we, have, we need $500 million. Hold the second. For the much larger target, the concept is scalable, scalable. So we do have financially affordable concept, technically credible solutions. So we are not talking about science fictional concept or technique. Much larger one, 1.5 kilometer, yes, that is the maximum size we can handle at this time using current existing technologies. To enable such a low cost, economically viable missions, we do need this special vehicle design called Hypervelocity Asteroid Intercept Vehicle, which is being designed by Iowa State ADRC, funded by NASA, Innovative Advanced Concept Program, and after being deployed in space by using deployable boom, the first one will create small crater, and then second satellite carrying unwanted nuclear device will further cause fragmentations. Then, going through this kind of cloud in space, the Earth will go through that debris clouds. So there's no 100% protections. We or you or politician, police makers to make a decisions. What is acceptable net effect? 0.1% or 1% depending on the size of the target and warning time. So, we reviewed the history. We know that that will happen again sooner or later. We now know that we, it is possible to prevent such impact. But let's look at the cost of doing nothing. That may happen because we have a four years election cycle of president. <laughs> so there may be delay to the next administrator. So the cost of doing nothing is very simple. Is to add one more red dot on this map on North America. This is a collection of crater. Clearly, it's during the last 74 million years time frame, but many of them are very recent. So it's only if we don't do anything, we are going to simply add one more red dot. Someone is going to show that map sooner or later. Outcome damage will be much, much larger than 35,000 Hiroshima nuclear bombs. In conclusions, after five years intensive research activity for the, uh, for the now, for the first time in the history of humanity, we will be able to prevent an Armageddon. So this topic will not be a science fictional subject matter anymore. We are ready to prevent it if public like you continue to support your interest, show your interest, and encourage us to continue this kind of engineering and technology development. Thank you so much for your attention.